Okay, so let's start with the parts of the guitar. Now the top of the guitar looks something like that. So on and so forth. Okay, this is called the head. These are called the tuning pegs. A little thing right here too. It's the tuning machines. The machine is the whole thing. The peg is just the, the peg. Uh, right here, there's this little white thing that holds your guitar strings. It is called the nut. Okay. And then this thing here is called the neck. Um, when you get down to the body of the guitar, this is the body, obviously. <laughs> this is the sound hole. And this little thing over here is called the... Um, uh, pick guard. Playing guitar for nine years and I can't remember that. It's the pick guard. It's so that you don't scratch up your wood. That's pretty much the only purpose it serves. Over here, there's this little wooden thing where all the strings come down and they go into this little wooden thing. And that thing is called the bridge. Uh, and of course, there's this, another little white thing like up here that holds your strings in. And there's these little, little doohickeys right here that hold your strings into the actual body of the guitar. Um, yeah. That's... That's the guitar. Um, recap. Head. Tuning pegs. Tuning machines. Uh, nut. Neck. Body. Sound hole. Uh, pick guard. Bridge. Um, I mean, there's other parts, too, but that's not really important to know. Like, they have names for, like, the back of the body, and it's like, okay, who cares? Um, and if you have an electric guitar, it'll have, um, right here, it'll have like a volume knob and tone controls. And depending how many, uh, what type of a guitar you have and how many uh, pickups, which is a little, the little, like, okay, let me erase this right here. Um, on electric guitars, it'll have like these little things that go like this over the actual body of the guitar. Just ignore this up here. Um, this is the body of the guitar, and it'll have these little round things over here below the strings. Those are called, uh, um, I just said it, I swear, uh, um, mm. well, if there's two of them, it's a humbucker, and if it's single, it's called a single coil. Pickups. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I am having a rough day today. Um, and these are called pickups. Now, acoustic guitars will have pickups too, but they'll have a different kind. Uh, if you have a really expensive one, they'll have this little bitty microphone that's right in here. Um, and the microphone will act as the pickup. Um, but in most of them, there's just this little device over here somewhere under here, like, it'll be under the wood, though, like, on the inside, and it'll have, like, a device that meets up here where you can tune and whatnot, and then it'll have the actual plug-in somewhere over here, um, and so they both do amplification. The difference is that one is passive and one is active. Uh, what that means is, uh, uh, passive basically means that it has to have a battery to sustain its power, and active, an active pickup means that it, um, you don't have to have a battery, you just plug it in and you go. Um, Fender Stratocasters, um, the Telecasters, they have active pickups. Uh, if you have like an Ibanez acoustic electric guitar, it'll have a passive uh, pickup. Um, so that's the basic idea of the guitar. Um, and as far as tuning goes, you remember how I s said about, um, about notes being just sounds that we've given names to and how they repeat themselves and whatnot. Well, so on every instrument, we've figured out uh, ways through music theory and through time 
uh, of tuning and what's best and whatnot. So each different instrument will have a different tuning. Now, what a piano does is every single string will be tuned to something different, right? But if you got like a clarinet, then it will the 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 pipings, for lack of a better word, because uh, I'm not real familiar with the names of, of wind instruments like the the parts. Um, they'll have different lengths and whatnot and different uh, widths and whatnot that, that will make it um, uh, have different and be in different keys. So like it's you would have let's say a trumpet in I don't know uh, C I don't know uh, and what that means is that that trumpet or whatever it is um, is made with the right uh, width and length that it would um, the sounds that it'll that it'll blow out will be in that key. Um, but in a guitar, you don't really have to worry about that because you control the the um, tunings. Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, and so on, on piano, you know, it has all those little things. You would just like you'd hit a note, which would be one of the little keys. And if you go this way, it goes well. I'm backwards, so flip yourself. Uh, if you're going to the left. Then uh, you go. You're going down to lower notes, deeper notes, and if you go right, you'd be going up to higher notes. And the guitar basically has the same idea. Like once again, here's your head. I'm not going to draw the whole thing, but there's basically there basically is. You know, it's got the tuning stuff and whatnot. I'm I'm an artist. Can you tell? Um, and then you've got your neck here, and you're going to have one, two, three, four, five six strings. Now, the deepest you can go is however low these notes are, are strung. Like, um, if you ever listen to metal music, they'll lower these notes to where they can hit even lower uh, octaves, even lower notes, even lower sounds. Um, but the standard guitar tuning, what the majority of people use, and you know, obviously there's accept exceptions, uh, Aaron Schest uses a uh, um, a form of a drop D tuning for his My Savior, My God, um, et cetera, et cetera. I don't think you really care about that, though. Um, so these notes are, are tuned to E, A, D, G, B, and E. Okay? Um, this, of course, would be your fat string, and this would be your skinny string. So going, it would be looking like this, you know, like you're playing like this. Uh, so imagine it like that though because you know it once again it's mirrored um, so yeah uh, so the fat string would be up here and the skinny string would be down here so in order from fattest to skinniest E A D G B E that makes sense I hope um, if it doesn't just watch a few more times and maybe it'll make sense or just write down a question and I'll, and I'll answer it in our next lesson um, so that's how you tune the guitar um, and then a lot of the a lot of the notes. Why this is important is because um, nobody explained this to me when I started out on guitar. Like you'll you'll see a guitar book and it'll say, okay, first fret on the. Oh, I forgot to explain what a fret is. Let me write that down real quick. Um, the guitar book will say something like this: the first fret, first string, um, would be F. But what they don't tell you is it's only F because of your tuning. If you change the guitar's tuning, if you change what these notes are are, are tuned to, um, it'll change what note is on that fret. So th I hope that makes sense. Now, what is a fret? I'm glad that I just remembered to tell you. <laughs> There's little metal things that go all along your guitar's neck. They're 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 like they're, they look sil silver, and these are called frets. So, you know, the first string would be um, the skinny string, okay? So, like, okay, I'm making this really difficult. <laughs> um, so the strings from fattest to skinniest is E, A, D, G, B, E. Now, what these strings are called is first string, second string, third string, fourth string, fifth string, sixth string. And... Once again, I'm sorry if I made this difficult. I'm really trying not to make it difficult. Um, so, yeah, I hope that makes sense. Um, so they'll say like, okay, the first fret, which would be this space right here, the space between the nut, 
which is that thing up here that holds the string, and the first fret, which would be in between those two things, that would be the first fret. And then if you go to the next one up, that would be actually the second fret. Even though you haven't even hit the fret yet, it's still called the second fret, because it's think of it as spaces. First space, second space, third space. The, instead of calling it spaces, we call them frets. First fret, second fret, third fret. And when you're playing a note, this is just a side note. I think I mentioned this in another uh, video. You want to have, you want to put your finger as close to that metal fret, metal fret, without actually being on top of it or over it. Like, still be in this space, but be as far over this way as possible. Because if you if you go over here to like the middle or the back of that area over here or over here, um, it's gonna have um, a lot. Uh, uh, it's not gonna have as strong as a tone, uh, and it'll have this buzzing sound it just it'll it'll be irritating it won't sound pleasant <laughs> um okay yeah so if someone were to tell you first fret first string this would be the skinny string right here in this first in this first space um they they'll tell you and and probably in that guitar book that you're going to be using I'm not familiar with it, but I imagine they'll say something like this. That'll be the F string, they'll say, or the F note, uh, not the F string. It'll still be the E string, but it'll be they'll call it the F note. Yes, it is F. That is an F note if you're using standard tuning. Okay. Remember, we just give notes to sounds to help us find them and to help us um, write them down. It's like how we attribute symbols to letters so that we can spell words and and write. That's how we write. It's the exact same thing for music. Um, we have these sounds that we've been given notes, uh, names to. Um, yeah. So it's not the space that holds the sound. Okay. It's not that. It's not that you're playing here that makes it an F note. It's the fact that you're playing um, an F note because one note higher than an E is an F. Does that make sense? So in other words, let's say you tuned the guitar like this. You went F, uh, B, oh, just go go with me on this. F sharp, B, E, uh, A, um, C sharp, um, F sharp. And you might say, why did you say sharp? I don't want to get into that lesson right now. Um, so let's just say you tuned your guitar like this. The fat string was an F sharp, then the second fat string would be a B, and the next one E, and the next one A, and the next one C sharp, and the next one F sharp. Now, if you were at that same placement that the book would probably tell you is an F, that would actually make your note, If it, that would, then the open string would be an F sharp. So that would actually make it a G note. So how it works? Because the location isn't what gives it its, its name. It is the actual uh, the, the note itself, the the sound pitch, uh, how high or how low it is that, that gives it its its name. And once again, I, I, I really genuinely do hope that I made this um, in a way that you can understand it. I'm sorry if I didn't. I tried. <laughs> um, so there's that. Um, so once again, E, A, D, G, B, E. And these are frets, then neck and all that stuff. Uh, Thanks for watching. I hope that I hope that I hope that you're learning. Um, I hope that these videos are are a help and not a hindrance. Um, well, I'll see you on the next lesson.